know there's rules. HCMI to VGA or Mug to VGA July 2014. URL, it has VGA. I need one of those three. Your laptop will go to the URL. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was my question. Did I get it right? Mm -hmm. Page not found. Oh, look at that. Something's coming up there. Okay. 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 Alright. On your own. Uh, right. Now I will, uh, I will uh, give the introduction. This is uh, Mark Rand from Canonical, and he's going to talk to us about the Go programming language. So take it away, Mark. All right, so who has heard of Go? Okay, who writes code on a regular basis? Okay. In Go or just writes In code? any language. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, we already established that nobody here does Java. <laughs> What's the most common language? Who does Perl? I know there's some Perl. Okay, a couple. Python? Um, C? Had two. Uh, so, uh, my question um, was why, if I can make this up. Okay, <laughs> why? Um, so I'm going to answer this question through sort of the lens of what happened at Canonical. Uh, we wrote Juju originally, it was prototyped in Python and then it was rewritten in Go. Um, so I'm going to talk through the thinking behind that decision rather than abstract the answer to this. Um, but please ask questions. I want this to be interactive. Um, so who uses one of these languages normally? Who's like a dynamic language person? OK. Who's one of these language people? So we've got a couple. Who's one of these language people? <laughs> There's never any of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to Will say, explain with those. never. No longer here. I wrote some stuff in early. Oh, it was a Sorry. horrible, horrible experience. We'll talk about that later. Isn't F, doesn't F fit into that? Or, or yes, F would be another one of those. I did. They're not exhaustive. <laughs> Um, yeah, Microsoft's functional programming language is F, right? Is that what it is? I think I, so. I just heard, I'm not sure if it's what it's called. Um, so, um, I guess I will start out a little bit abstract. Um, we had three problems, concurrency, concurrency, and concurrency. <laughs> and I think that's actually pretty normal these days. Um, C was an abstract machine language. So you have assembly. That is a concrete machine language for that particular hardware. Um, C was like, hey, we should have programs that you could write, and they could run on a variety of different hardware. Mm -hmm. So they made sort of an abstract machine, like conceptually, that you can think about, and it has threads, and it has things. Um, but really, C is very much about an abstract machine where there is a, an execution unit that does things in C. Not there are 10 execution units, got 10 CPUs. C is very much designed for a world where the abstract machine does one thing at a time. Um, and the concrete machine underneath it did one thing at a time. And that worked for like 30 years. Like, there were multi core machines and things happened, but they weren't common. And it was okay. Like, in 1995, if you were doing video transcoding, and you had two cores, you just had to live with the fact that it was going to use one of those two cores. And you were also super rich, so who cares? Like, you're not a normal person. Today, everybody has multi-core machines. Like, my phone has multiple cores. <laughs> like, um, and all of the languages that were on uh, the list, except the functional languages, really were designed for single 
execution unit, and then threads were just a quick way to switch context, but still execute a bunch of things in order. Um, so going, whoa, hmm. concurrency is hard. Um, I forgot I had this slide. Is that a spell <laughs> Uh, concurrency is hard. Yeah, um, I did a talk called Concurrency is Hard. Uh, at spelling is hard. <laughs> spelling is, spelling hard. is also hard, mm -hmm. especially if you are me. Um, yes. There will probably be more spelling errors. <laughs> Just, this is a it's okay, it's not me this class, though. So. Everybody who gets a spelling error gets a gold star. Um, and probably concurrency is probably spelled wrong again. Like, yeah. Um, wrong and different. So I did a, a talk called Concurrency is Hard at CodeMash like three or four years ago. Uh, and the night before, and the talk had this idea of like I was going to talk about various concurrency related problems that I have run into in my life. Uh, and how like you get some code that is highly concurrent and then there's a problem and you have to figure it out. And you didn't write that code, and yeah. And so I had used this metaphor of left, being left holding the bag several times in this talk. And the night before this talk, I was going around with people and I was drinking, because that's what you do at conferences, right? <laughs> um, but not as heavily as some other people that I was with. Uh, and this one guy was really, like, he was drinking a lot and he was hitting on this girl. Um, <laughs> and drinking a lot, hitting on the girl, and drinking a lot, hitting on the girl, and uh, then he, we run out of things, he, that the place we were at, the room party we were at, they ran out of things to mix the rum with, so he's just like, hey, pour me a glass of rum, and I was like, that seems like a bad idea, I'm not involved in this, one. he's like, no, you have to decide how much I'm drinking, and I'm like, then I decide zero, <laughs> and he's like, well, give me a little bit, so I'm pouring a little bit, and it goes, Rum. Then he's got a good, you know, inch of rum in the bottom of his glass. And uh, I think the girl, uh, who will remain nameless, but is named after a Mattel toy. Mm. Uh, <laughs> That's really nameless. <laughs> She's Optimus Prime, by the way. Uh, no. That's not Mattel. That's Hatch. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Um, so... She decides that this is her cue to leave. Um, and so she gets up to leave, and he decides that this is his cue to down the inch and a half of rum and follow her, because if she's leaving, he's got to go too. You know? so he, he downs his rum, and this story has, anyway, it has a point. So he downs the rum, and then he jumps up to go follow her. That was not a good idea. Like, clearly, he, the combination of the rum and the standing up quickly did not agree with him. And so he grabs the brown paper bag <laughs> that the rum was in before it came out and became substance that goes back in the brown paper bag. <laughs> uh, and he grabs the brown paper bag and refills it with rum. And uh, then Rob, I almost said her name. She's leaving, and uh, he decides that he needs to follow her, so he just hands me the bag. Ew. And, oh. and so now I'm Left sitting there the with a bag, <laughs> Left holding the bag filled with someone else's vomit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I need to get to the bathroom because this is not okay. And I'm like, make way, make way. And everybody's like, who is this dude? This super creepy dude with a bag full of vomit. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, it's not my vomit. Like that. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's not better. I can't wait to hear how this has to do with concurrency. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting. No, it's no. left so holding it's the bag. Metaphor. That's the metaphor. So now, if I think of left holding the bag, I have a very concrete picture. <laughs> yeah, what that is. <laughs> Somebody else's mess to clean up. Yeah. Yes. And it might be oozing and gross. Oh. Yeah. All right. So I want to just talk quickly about. Oh, it went yeah. past one. It's past minus four. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see it just keeps going. Yeah. All right. Now back to minus four. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to 
talk about MySQL while it's little. Um, <laughs> so I worked at this company called Optio, and we had a piece of software called the MedX that printed patient medical records. It was not like rocket science, but there was some concurrency needed because you're printing to lots of different printers and need to spool multiple things at a time. You need to, um, like we would print a lot of patient records. Um, and so we had a network queue. Oh, who knows what a network queue is? Okay. So it was just a queue um, of things that needed to be printed. And then we had a bunch of workers that were separate processes, um, multi-threaded processes, but separate processes, that pulled down um, stuff from the network queue and then spooled them up to print. Um, not rocket science. Uh, that network queue was implement, implemented with a Postgres backend, and it used select for update. It like it abused SQL. So select for update. Who knows the difference between select and select for update? There's one dude in the back. Explain it. <laughs> one is selected read only. The other mm -hmm. is selected for read and writing. Right. So it locks it record. until you have updated. Yes. By default. Um, MySQL does not have select for update, so when we had to port it from Postgres to MySQL, for bad reasons, because there are no good reasons, um, we couldn't use select for update. So MySQL has this thing that it calls opportunistic locking, which sounds great, um, but like I don't even know what that means, like opportunistic locking. Well. If I can, I'll lock it. Otherwise, uh, screw you. <laughs> um, and it really is just a big mutex. Like you give it a string, and it and you can ask it, is there a lock for this string? It doesn't actually lock anything in the database. It does nothing. But it'll tell you. So we constructed a string that was the query to get a specific record, and then we lock it. Um, we grab the opportunistic lock for that string. So if somebody else tried to get that specific record, then they would fail. And this was great and it worked fine, except like one time in 10,000 or somewhere thereabouts.